And if you folks don't mind, I'm going to use this map to tell you what happened at Shiloh. Great. Okay, at Shiloh, this is the battlefield of Shiloh, Pittsburgh Landing. Grant's forces are camped out here around a little church called Shiloh. They're basically in this area and back in here. Wallace, in command of the 3rd Division, is by himself up here protecting Grant's right flank. Wallace has divided his division. He's got Morgan L. Smith Brigade at Crump's Landing, it was called, where his headquarters was, on the Tennessee River. He's got a brigade here at the wonderful Stony Lonesome. Is that not a great name? Wallace's soldiers named that. I can just imagine what it was. Well, I've been there. It's Stony Lonesome. <laughs> His third brigade was way out there <coughs> under command of a man named Whittlesey. Now, he's by himself. There's a Confederate army of close to 70,000 men south of here. This is north, south. The Tennessee River runs almost due north-south in this area. There are also Confederates out here. Wallace knows about them. He's worried he's going to be attacked. He may have to be reinforced. He may have to go down to Shiloh to move on Corinth because the objective is take a Confederate army in Corinth, Mississippi, to take that army. So he has to improve a road because the roads, according to one of his men, I love this, were a little better than muddy cow paths. So he has to do something because he's got to get artillery. And artillery, you can't move artillery down a muddy road, it'll get stuck. So he sends out his cavalry and they tell him this road called the Shunpike is the best road. It's the furthest away from the Tennessee River it's springtime in Tennessee, there's been a ton of rain, the roads are very, very muddy, particularly this road, the river road close to the river. So, Wallace improves this road, he corduroys it, which means they lay logs down at regular intervals, so that he can take an artillery battery and a run down this road. Now he's going to end up here, which is where one of Grant's commanders, William T. Sherman, is on the far right of the Union Army when he comes down this shunpike, if he's ordered to. On April 6, 1862, the Confederates stole a march on Grant. This is the big <coughs> Grant embarrassment at Shiloh. Grant had expected to be able to move down these roads on Corinth and take the Confederates. Well, the Confederates surprised him. They moved on him. It was a surprise. Not as great a surprise as you'll read in some books, but it was a surprise. Grant, Grant's headquarters is actually further upriver. Grant was not with his army that morning. That's, one, that's another nasty little secret. Grant did not get to his army until mid-morning because he had to steam up the Tennessee River. He got on the ground, realized it was an attack, and sent an order to Wallace. He needed Wallace here, or he needed Wallace with his army. Now, that issue is, what did that order say? Wallace's chief of staff lost the order, so we'll never know for sure. Grant gave his order orally to an aide. He didn't write it. He said to somebody, and somebody else wrote it down. Now Grant always maintained that he ordered Wallace to go to Pittsburgh Landing, which would have dictated Wallace moving down the river road. Even though he had improved it, hadn't improved it, he would have had to go if that was the order, and Wallace would have obeyed an order. That's the one thing that everybody sort of misses in this. Wallace never would have disobeyed a direct order. Wallace, however, said the order he got told him to move to the right of the Union Army. For Wallace, that meant taking the road he'd improved. That was the fastest way to the Union Army. So he took that road this far. When he got there, at this point, another messenger from Grant arrived and said, what are you doing here? 
And Grant said, I, I mean, Wallace said, I'm obeying my orders. I'm going to the right of the Union Army. The messenger said, according to Wallace, he wants, Grant wants you at Pittsburgh Landing and he wants you there like hell. So what did Wallace have to do? He had to find a way to get from here to here. What he had to do, he turned around, he went back, a local guide said, well, there's a crossroad here. Now that crossroad was totally unimproved and tiny. It was muddy. His men said that the road was lined with panting stragglers after a while, because these guys had rifles and packs, and they're marching through mud, and they're pushing the artillery, because of course the horses would get stuck and they'd have to push the artillery. Wallace then turned on the river road, crossed this bridge, and got to the battlefield about 7 o'clock. He had left around noon because he got his orders late morning. Seven hours it took him. Grant never did understand why it took Wallace all that time because Grant expected Wallace to take this road. Because, and here's where I tell you Wallace wasn't a team player. Wallace may have improved this road, but he never told Grant. So Grant didn't know that he would automatically use that road. And I maintain that Grant probably told Wallace to do what he did, but he thought Wallace would come this way and then go up this way. In other words, he, he told Wallace to move to the Union right, but he thought Wallace would come this way, not knowing anything about that way, about the Shanghai. Now, in um, October of 2005, with seven other absolutely crazy people, I did something nobody's done since 1862. We marched from Stony Lonesome to here. Most of the roads are gone. Most of these roads are now gone. You walk across country. You have to cross creeks using rope toes and boats. You have to march through cane breaks. I now know what cane break is. I'm trust me, folks. You don't want to do this. Um, over barbed wire fences, etc. What we found out, we took along the GPS, was that Wallace and his men marched almost 17 miles that day in seven hours. We didn't have backpacks. We didn't have rifles. We didn't have mud. It took us seven hours and 15 minutes. So they did not linger on the march. It was, and it was, it would have been an incredible march. We found out lots of things about Wallace just before, when he reached this point, right here, he's actually overlooking the battlefield. He was criticized by Grant's staffers for being too tenuous about crossing the bridge. When you get to this point, you can see the whole battlefield. He would have seen smoke. He would have heard cannons. He would have been worried about descending to cross this one little bridge 